So let's go ahead and get into the user interface for our game. So what we're going to be creating is a lives display where we'll display how many lives the player has. We'll create a score display, which will keep track of how many enemies we destroy. And then we'll also go ahead and create our title screen and create logic to where when we hit the P key for play, uh, we can start the game or whatever key you'd like it to be. So let's go ahead and take a look at our, um, our sprites folder here. Inside your sprites folder, you'll find a folder called UI, which stands for user interface. And inside here, we have a lives folder. This is how our lives are going to be displayed. Uh, you can think of this as sort of like if you've ever played uh, Zelda, okay? So in Zelda, uh, they have like the heart system and the hearts kind of disappear. And when, when one heart disappears, it has that grayed out shade. That's exactly what we're creating here. So we have three lives in our game. And when you have only one, it's gonna show one with two grayed out. So we're gonna create logic for displaying the appropriate one. So this is kind of the, the magic trick of how that's done. Uh, essentially what we'll do is we'll have this no lives method here, or I'm sorry, this no lives image here. And um, we're just gonna be updating the sprite based on how many lives our player has. So what do we do to get started here? Let's go ahead and position where we want this to be. Go ahead and right click in the hierarchy go to UI, go to image. This is automatically going to create a canvas. The canvas is the area that all UI elements should be inside. The canvas is just the game object that holds all of your UI elements as children. So you'll also see that it also gave us an event system and this is used for messaging, uh, which we're not really gonna cover that much uh, in this course. But if you're interested in learning more about the canvas, definitely check out the docs uh, for the manual on the UI canvas at unity3d.com. So here's what we have. We have a canvas here that's gonna house all of our images or all of our on-screen elements for the user interface. We have this image here. Let's go ahead and rename this and call it player lives. And you'll see here that we have an image component. We can change the color of this square or we can give it a source image. Go ahead and drag the no lives source image to it. And you'll see here that it updates to that image. We can also drag in the three lives and it updates just as well. Okay, so what I wanna do here is we're gonna choose in the scene view where we wanna position this. You can see this, this square here. This is our canvas. So the square is our canvas. This is where basically your, your screen overlay for your entire user interface lives. So you can actually drag within this square and your image will be on screen as you can see here. So where you guys wanna position this, you're more than welcome to position it wherever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and position this in the top left corner here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get it right about there. Pretty happy with that spacing. Uh, you're more than welcome to get it however you see fit though. And once you have it there, go ahead and set it to what the, what the game starts with. So for instance, we start with three lives. So your source image should be three. And what's gonna happen now is when we, when we get hurt, we're going to say, okay, let's update the UI display. We no longer have three lives, we now have two lives. So we're gonna be changing out the source image for two lives. And you can see here that it happens as, as if you naturally just removed one. Um, but really all the magic is, is we're doing an image swap and it happens so quickly that the naked eye can't even pick it up. So if we go to one life, we go to one and then eventually we'll have no lives and it's game over. And then we'll be able to press the, like, the R key to restart and when we do that, we'll go back to three lives. So where does all this magic happen? How do we control all of this? We're gonna have a user interface manager called a UI manager. And this script has one job only, and its job is to manage the display of your game, the update display. So you, you can think of it as the, uh, the HUD, heads up display. All it's gonna do is update our, our UI. So let's go ahead, right click, create a new C Sharp script, and let's go ahead and call it UI manager. Now we're gonna need to house this somewhere. So just like our spawn manager, how it sort of just sits on an empty object in the scene, we're gonna do the exact same thing with our canvas. Now, typically what you'll find is some people actually use their canvas to house the UI manager, and that's perfectly fine. Or you can actually create a new object by going to create, create empty, or control shift N for PC, command shift N for Mac, and you can drag it on there. 
I actually like the idea of using our canvas since it has to be in the scene anyways and it controls all of our, our UI elements. It makes more sense for me to have it on the canvas. So go ahead and drag your UI manager on top of the canvas. Now we have a UI manager component attached. Go ahead and open that script up. And let's go ahead and look at the logic for how we're going to update our display. Alrighty, so we're inside the UI manager. Now, the only responsibility for the UI manager is to handle the update of our display. So let's go ahead and treat this as a blueprint for what the UI manager is. I'm going to go ahead and remove void start and update. We may add them back later, but for now, just to create a blueprint of what the UI manager is responsible for, let's go ahead and actually write out its program um, like a blueprint. So for instance, the UI manager can do what? We can update our display. So we'll have a method that we can call from our player when we get hurt that says update lives. So to do that, we'll say public void update lives. And then what's another thing that our UI manager is going to do? We're going to have a score, right? So every time we destroy an enemy, they'll make a call to the UI manager and they're going to call our method called public void we'll say update score. And is there anything else we're missing? We're going to update our live. We're going to update our score. And I think for the most part, that's pretty much it. Um, one thing our UI manager is going to be responsible for, how can it update the lives? You saw that in order to update the lives, we're swapping out those sprites. Our program needs to know what those sprites are. So we're going to have a variable for those sprites. So here we can go ahead and say, and, and this is really important too before we start, um, notice that it was an image component and what we were working with here on that image if we click on the player lives here it's an image component and we're changing the source image which takes a sprite so i'm going to have a variable of type sprite because i want to be able to hold one of these sprite game objects so let's hop back over to our script and what we're going to do is we're going to have a variable here called sprite so public sprite and we'll go ahead and say uh, public sprite we'll go ahead and call this we can say no lives whoops public sprite no lives image and then we can you know you can create another one that would be public sprite one live you know one life image and so forth now you may see that now you may, you may be thinking, this is a little repetitive and redundant. And imagine if you actually had a game where you had 100 lives and you had 100 sprites. Would it make logical sense to create 100 variables here? Absolutely not. So what I want to introduce you guys to is an array. An array is a fixed list that contains some sort of data structure. And basically what we can do is we can have one variable that contains all of our elements, all of our sprites, and we can access those sprites when we need to. What's great about this way of doing it is that we can access an array by an index, and that index can correspond to our lives. So how do we declare an array? In order to declare an array, which again is just a fixed list, like a fixed size list, we can go ahead and say public sprite, which is our data type, and then to make it an array, we use the square brackets. And then every variable still needs a name. So public sprite, we'll go ahead and call this uh, sprites. Or maybe uh, we'll say lives. And go ahead and just add a semicolon. Save your script. Head back over to Unity. OK, and you'll see here if we click on our canvas and you look at your UI component, on the UI manager, we now have this little drop down called lives. This is our array, and we can set the size of this array. So we have four images no lives, one, two, and three. By doing that, you'll see here that we have very, they're essentially, we have four types of, uh, four variables to store information in. So we have, we have one variable that stores four items of type sprite. So that's how arrays work. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nifty tool to have. So let's go ahead and populate this. And what I want to do here is we're going to correspond these numbers, the order in the list, to the amount of lives the player has. So for instance, if element zero, when the player has zero lives, that's what we're going to use for no lives. When the, when the player has one life, we're going to use element one. 
Same goes for two, and I'm just dragging and dropping them directly into these, um, these element holders here. Element three, three. So now the question comes, how do we access these individual elements such as element zero, one, two, three, and four? We have an array variable called lives that holds four sprites. How would I access the first element, which is zero? Well, it's pretty easy. I would basically go ahead and say lives, which is our array, the variable name we called the array, and I would use the array brackets to index it. So zero would get me the first image, one would get me the next, second would get me the third, and three would get me the last one. Now you might be wondering, why, am, why is it starting at zero? Because in programming, all numbers start at zero. So everything is indexed at zero. So zero is the first element, three is the last element. When someone asks you the size or length of the array for lives, the length is four. However, the elements are zero, one, two, three, as that's four digits. So this is how we access those individual sprites, which we'll be using momentarily. So here we have our variable for sprites. And give me one second here, my indenting is a little out of whack here. Okay, perfect. All right, so we have all of our lives and we have, um, we have our blueprint for how this is gonna function. We have an update lives method, which we'll call. And then we also have an update score method, which we'll call. Now, typically when you're creating manager classes, Manager classes should not communicate with other scripts. Instead, other scripts, such as our player, such as our enemy, they should communicate with us, the UI manager. So here we have a problem. How do I know how many lives the player has? For instance, look at this. We say here, public void update lives. We know that we're gonna be swapping out the current image source for one of these sprites, but how do I know which one? How do I know how many lives this player has. Well, that is where we have to get into custom functions or methods such as update lives, but with parameter types and arguments where we can pass in data to this method. Similar to what you've seen us do with, uh, with the on trigger events and how it has a parameter in there called collider other, we can actually create our own custom parameter methods where we can request additional information. So when the player calls this update lives method, they're gonna also include how many lives they currently have. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate custom methods for you in the next video.